All right, and thank you everyone for joining us for ICMI 2021, where we're going to discuss XY crew and other men's rights resources. <clears throat> so this is kind of one part benefit that will enhance male lives and one part shilling. So I'm joined with my partner, Vernon Meigs. Meigs. So sometimes I forget, but it's Megs. Yeah. And this will be an opportunity for many of you to come on, share your experience with XY Crew, or share something else um, that you want to promote. And I will start off by actually, before we talk about XY Crew, I'm going to promote my website boysmenissues.com. Now, if you look on my profile for Whova, you will find the link to that. But I produce many things there, including the male privilege card. Don't leave home without it. On the back are a number of privileges that we have as men. And I'll go ahead and read a couple of them. Uh, more school suspensions not recognized as victims of domestic violence, uh, shorter life expectancy, uh, higher rates of suicide, no paternal rights, uh, false accusations can ruin your life. So anytime someone tells you to check your male privilege, you can pull this card out and say, let me check it real quick. Uh, nope, that thing you're com complaining about is not on this card. So, other things that you can get on my shop is the men's magazine. Now, we've only done about two issues so far, the first one being a physical and digital, and the second one being digital only. Um, but one of my big goals for the future of ICMI and the men's movement as a whole is to increase our culture. Unfortunately, my backdrop is uh, interfering with me showing this, but you can see that I have some articles, professionally well done. Uh, if you want to open that up a little bit and show people the yeah, layout yeah. I've done. Yeah, sure thing. Let's see. So I think you had it open to this page here. Oops. Yeah. And I studied a lot about how to do magazines, the different components to it, how to bring it all together. And that's really what my goal was in designing this. Because we don't have enough magazines dedicated to men. I mean, there's rela hobby related stuff that we get. Uh, yeah, that was the one that Catherine did. She is a STEM student in con um, construction engineering, or more specifically management, but she does, she's not afraid to get her hands dirty. We also have the quick reference guide from the Lovely Ladies Calendar, which is kind of a precursor to my upcoming book series, Boys and Men's Issues Handbook. So... That is my shilling. Now that that's out of the way, um, again, that's boysmenissues.com. And it's on my profile to find. So let's talk about XY Crew, formerly regarding men. Now, we bring this up because I have seen some really great things happen as a result of this group started by Paul Elam, Janice Fiamingo, and Tom Golden. And not only do I get a chance to talk to them, which are very easygoing people to talk to, but I get to talk to so many other people and get to hear their stories and realize many of the stuff I've been through is just not unique to me. Then some form or fashion, other people have gone through what I have, and I've gone through what other people have. Now, I've told my story many, many times over, so I'll just go through real quickly of what led me to um, XY Crew. Um, in 2012, 
I had an injury that left me permanently disabled. It was about a year later that I actually got into the men's movement for completely different reasons. So it was actually Anita Sarkeesian that got me into it. And, you know, I, it, it's hard to kind of break into a new movement when you really don't know anything about it. In fact, I didn't know when a movement existed until I wanted to start one. And then I realized there was a whole group of us already out there. So I had a voice. I wanted to say something. So I made videos and I did that for a good portion of my time. And then I did the calendars and I've written books and I've done the magazine. XY Crew for me was really an opportunity to meet other people in the men's movement. While I have met people kind of here and there, it's just like I wanted to get on the ground floor because I was kind of intimidated by a voice for men. There was already a community there. And it's like me coming into that, don't, I mean, I want to be in the top. And it's just like, how can I knowingly join this group and make a name for myself and it's a little silly now that I look back at it I mean you just go in there and you just be yourself and that's good enough but with XY crew you know Paul was starting something new and I'm like I don't care what it is I'll join it and then I found out what it actually was and I'm like this is awesome because more often than not, I can't really talk about what's going on in my life, primarily because I have no one to talk to, but also because, <clears throat> yeah, that's a good idea. There's Dan, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But with uh, XY Crew, I just, I felt like I finally belonged somewhere. That's one of the hardest things for us men is that we, we, it's difficult for us to find somewhere to fit in. And usually the way we fit in is by hiding who we really are. So, and that's what XY Crew has given me. It's allowed me to met, meet some great people. I've worked on a number of projects with people. I've helped people out um, in a variety of ways. And here, my doing ICMI now is thanks to XY Crew. But enough about me talking about it. I'd like to bring in some people for XY Crew. And as Dan Sullivan suggested, if I bring in a couple of people, you can kind of see what one looks like. Uh, obviously, of course, and this is a rule that we have in XY Crew, is what happens in XY Crew stays in XY Crew. So while many of us are kind of used to that environment, make sure that because this is going to go public, anything that's discussed in XY Crews remains in XY Crew. This does not count as XY Crew. Now, if you'd like to join us for a short time, just put your hand up and I'll bring several of you in and we can have a demonstration of what XY Crew looks like. Woo, we got Dan Sullivan already with his hand up. Okay, I'm going to promote him to panelists. Who else wants in? Oh, well, there's Jonathan Lawless. I love that name, by the way. Ooh, Philip Tanzer. So in traditional um, XY crew, we're just going to do a check-in. And we'll go ahead and start with Dan Sullivan. Do you want to check in with anything? Sure. I, I'm glad I dressed up for this. <laughs> yeah, we just, uh, we come on, um, I think, well, I belong to Tom's group too. And Tom only has one thing a week, but uh, Paul has we have something averages once a day we have a different event and uh most of them are convenient for americans but we have some that are convenient for australians and um english members too or european 
members too and it's it's particularly interesting to uh run into the people from other countries and um and it's good we we come on we talk about uh we talk about our problems we sometimes we pontificate ab about politics which is i think less interesting than than people just talking about their their uh, personal lives and if somebody has i mean a lot of times somebody comes in with a, a, especially new members a lot of new members come in with something of a horror story about um their divorce or their inability to access uh to to interact with their kids and stuff and what's interesting to me is how how quickly their their attitudes improve that you'll you'll see the same person who who sounded almost pathetic when he got here sounding really energized um a couple weeks later and um and so it, it's become easier and easier for me to to listen to those horrendous stories and and even to listen to people you would think are are kind of going on too long about it but but in the process of getting out their pain you get to see them heal and you get to interact with them and then we just like rib each other and and do things with each other that that are socially taboo in this feminized society where you know i'm in another group where people just that it's just a facebook group but people get all bent out of shape about about uh something you say that offends them and and in the men's in the men you know in in the xy crew context uh somebody says well that was offensive and and somebody else will say well i tried you know so so it's it's a it's it becomes a very masculine place so i just really enjoy it and let's and turn I mean, it over <laughs> let's turn it over to philip uh what is your experience like um Oh, uh, to be honest, I think I might have misunderstood because I am not a member of an XY crew. Um, so I thought that people were um, also invited to try to experience what a session would look like. So I'm a newbie in that regard. I think that's absolutely fair, you know. Uh, so yeah. you, so you, you would be an example of the guy of a new guy that we're trying to sell this to. So. <laughs> um i i would say i i i almost feel like i uh, hearing that i almost feel like i don't deserve the space or i don't belong because i it might sound silly but i feel like i haven't experienced the pain to deserve to be in this space um because i'm a, i'm one of the very very few mras who I think hasn't been uh, hurt in in the same way that many other people have been hurt. Well, let me let me speak to that a bit. Um, I I kind of feel you there in, in that way because you know I haven't myself experienced a terrible amount of trauma. My parents are still together, you know, you know in terms of marriage, you know, um, and I haven't. Uh, gone through a horrible divorce uh th those kind of things we keep on hearing these horror stories some you know in a way i can kind of understand where you come from because i felt well, well, well uh what am i doing here i you know i'm not the guy that's experienced this kind of stuff what what why do i deserve to say anything but uh i you know i think th there there are some people like you like me and you know we're here to listen and you know you're not any uh uh less valid uh because of that you're still welcome in this this space you know uh, you're you're there to talk about you know because you know whatever you say it's it's all it's all good we want to hear you you know wherever you come from thank you yeah and we interrupt each other all the time like i'm doing now and and uh and you know i don't have i don't have as much of a horror story with women because uh all the gold diggers 
took one look at me and said, no gold there. So, <laughs> you know, so I did not, I did not run into women who were trying to get over on me. And, uh, and so, you know, but life, life throws things at you and it is just, you know, it's really, it's really just a, a good men's space. And, um, and we have, you know, we have these regular events where we check in and then we have something called the cyber shed which you just log on to any time. And usually Mike, um, it's just called my Uncle Mike on the thing. And Uncle Mike is there as much as possible. But um, you just log on and, and if you, uh, Zoom will kick you off if, after 40 minutes if there's only one person there for 40 minutes. But usually somebody pops on within that 40 minutes and you just have a conversation with anybody you want to. And um, a lot of times it's very friendly and, and um, Mike and, and somebody named Guy play chess on it from time to time. Um, and so if there's nothing else going on, they'll just throw up a game of chess and I'll come on and I'll, oh, they're playing chess. I, you know, so <laughs> I'll just say, ah, I, don't, I don't care. But, um, yeah, it's well, it's really it's really more of a a men. It's not like a therapy group. So if, if you're not traumatized, it doesn't matter. You're, it's a therapy group when somebody seems to need therapy. But it's really just a bunch of guys um, being glad for each other's company most of the time. It's basically a judgment-free zone because there are some things we just cannot talk to women about. Just that they're always looking for ways to undermine us, ways to find our weaknesses, just, and it makes it difficult to talk sometimes because if we're too open, they'll just, I don't know, lose respect for us. Like we have to always be this masculine, super heat man type. And it gets annoying at times because it's like, I really want to talk. And not all the things I have to come up with are bad. In fact, the last time I was in, I was thanking everyone because it's such a positive environment and it's transformed me. And I came in there with basically nothing. And my experience being inside there, as I've said, I met Mike Buchanan and he was impressed with me enough to bring me into ICMI and be a great contributor to that and if it weren't for XY crew I may not have had that opportunity so it's not just as Dan says I mean if you need therapy it's there as therapy if you just want to shoot the shit with the guys it's also that if you want to tell someone some good news where you won't be judged it's also that it's a little of everything that guys need and dare I say it and I, I'm going to uh, flog myself afterwards <laughs> it's a safe space yeah and the, the only woman on in it is Janice Fiamingo she's only there on Thursday evenings um New York you know Eastern Standard Time U.S. and I've noticed I mean Janice is wonderful and, and has great stuff, but I've noticed that we interact differently when we're with, when Janice is there. So it, of part, of, part of what's great about having a male only space is not just that we're free of the influence of women, but, but we turn off our, our female radar and we're looser and freer and more critical of each other we're not judgmental, but we are critical, and we're critical in a supportive way. And uh, but when but when Janice is there, we get more people um, praising her and and being really grateful for her presence and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I'm grateful for her presence, and I'm grateful for for uh, for Paul's presence and and everybody's presence but i you know but we occasionally get people especially new people who suck up to janice and we and we very quickly call them on it um i, I and, actually i've experienced that as well that sometimes it just takes one woman and 
I, I do not blame the woman at all. It just takes one woman to completely change the energy in a male space. And that's in some ways the beautiful magic of women, but um, it takes away from from that rawness and that honesty that man can have um, in a in a male exclusive space. Yeah, it's well, like there's it's actually a research study that was done on education of single sex environments versus co-ed environments, and what it was found is while female scholastic performance was not altered whether they were in a single sex environment or with males, males uh, act scholastic performance increased when they were in a male only space, that the presence of a female, they didn't try as hard academically. Yeah, it's, there's that there's that old saying that sailors said a woman on the ship is bad luck. And it's not because necessarily because the women did, women did anything, although sometimes it is. But but the main thing is that men will become assholes around women, and and it's part oh, of the in, it's part of the instinct of of impressing the woman of of being favorably viewed by the woman that the men will lose their ability to be favorably interacting with other men, and and so. It's one of the reasons why I'm, um, I was in the military for three years in Germany and um, I served with women and in time I came to the conclusion that I'm against women in the military, not because I have any problem with women, but um, the but I noticed that men be, changed their behavior and their the, the hierarchies were disrupted and then obviously there were the romantic uh, relations and and it wasn't a positive influence and i don't want to blame the women on that i think it's just a concept that that doesn't work sure uh one thing that immediately comes to mind was uh, uh in, in the last year i watched the movie starship troopers for the first time and i tried to depict this kind of fictionalized world about you know men and women kind of you know being you know uh, being sort of indifferent towards that whole you know not 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 all indifferent but you know it's like you know they're showering completely completely co-ed without any kind of leering or something like that some kind of fundamental egalitarianism or something like that now i think the movie is a bit of a parody of that kind of idea but uh you know i i, I think um you know, you know it's a bit of a contrast as to what actually happens today right uh, like am i right uh, philip yeah yeah I, I i think i i actually am a true egalitarian so i i don't as, as far as possible, I don't treat women differently from men, um, but I'm very observant. So I see how my surroundings change, how, how men change in regards to women. And I, I watched it and I was like, that's not working. <laughs> and well, I, I got actually, I got really pissed off because my my fellow comrades, they they became less professional and they started screwing the female soldiers. And I was like, I don't, I just don't want that stuff in my workplace. And it really started to affect us and I, I hated it. Yeah, I've seen that in other regards as well um, in the professional realm that females were more likely to get promoted, especially to trainer. And it's like, I always wanted to be a trainer but they keep giving it to females and maybe there's a good reason for it uh people respond better to a female but it's like <clears throat> especially in the call center business um customers tend to react more to females so they tend to give them higher ratings versus dealing with the male they tend to give them lower ratings so it's like i could give you the same level of help but because i'm not a woman you're going to give me three stars Whereas a woman who doesn't really help you at all, you'll give them five stars. And then if you get promoted based on your performance, well, people like prefer a woman, so women get promoted more. Interesting. I mean, certainly we're not being anti-female in this respect. We're just saying that 
how human beings interact with each other, the benefit of having a male only space means that we don't alter our behavior in the primitive need to impress her. Without a woman present, we can be a little bit more ourselves. And you could say, well, you know, that's just the fault of men right there. And maybe, but you know how women do the same thing. When there's a man around, they will change their behavior depending on what their specific needs are at that moment. Do they want to get a relationship? Do they want to have sex? Do they want to say how much they hate men? They will alter the behavior from an all-female environment to an environment with at least one male in it. So it's just human nature. One good thing that came out of it for me, um, we I'm, I'm not going to give his name because he didn't want credit for it, but he, he did a wonderful, I wrote a song parody called I'm a Victim, which is a parody of Helen Reddy's I Am Woman. And... Uh, and he did a wonderful, he, he did the song and he did the, um, the he, he threw in the choruses. And uh, so it, he, it was a, a great thing called I'm a Victim. And it's, it's, um, it's, it's on my um, YouTube channel as Dan Sullivan and it's on my Rumble channel as Saving Communities and stuff. So if anybody wants, it's like, a, three and a little over three minutes and uh and that was just something and then there's people who come on who are musicians and there's people who, who are talking about trying to get and we encourage people to you know there's people who are talking about playing in public and and uh and we've tried to encourage them with that and stuff there's a bunch of different things that that a lot of times have nothing to do with male female relationships they just have to do with people wanting to do something and and getting help doing it so it's uh you know and the the cyber shed is kind of off off the australian concept of men's sheds that uh in Australia, they have these these uh, sheds where guys come together and they work on projects together and they'll, they'll work on their cars or or try to craft something and and uh, and it provides that opportunity for them to interact in a work environment. And that's what the site because it's you, Zoom, you, you can't have, really. Do you have? Hmm. That's in in the U.S. as well. We've got them here in the U.K. We don't have them very, they're extremely rare in the US. And where I live, I'm in McKeesport, which is near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm making myself a very large garage, like about a four car garage, which is probably small compared to these men's sheds. But, um, but my, what my hope is that local people will, you know, will come over and, and work on things with me and work on their things as well. Well, I see and, it as the and, best opportunity for slave labor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but am I going to end up slaving for their projects or are they going to end up slaving for mine? Probably some of each. It's communism. Everyone is enslaved equally. <laughs> So what about you, Vernon? We haven't really heard from you. Uh, what does XY crew mean to you? It's really just a place for me to, uh, well, I, I go in whenever I get a chance, right? Because I usually keep busy, but I definitely support the group. And, you know, I, I want to hear how everybody's doing uh, ever since the last time I've checked in or something like that. Because sometimes it could be like a, like a length of time. And, you know, I tried to share what I'm currently working on. I think uh, uh, one, th you know, I tried to sh do things like, you know, I I'm working on this piece of music right now, and I'm I'm almost done, but I'm still working on this part or that part. And uh, well, uh, I think sharing that kind of gave me a a sort of bar not a barometer, but like a like an like a prospective audience that would eventually hear it uh, what when I'm I finished with it which I already finished I, I did finish it uh, before the Thanksgiving area so um 
uh, uh, so it's so it's up there for for all these expecting people to hear. But um, but otherwise, it's just kind of talk. Uh, it's it's a chance for me to kind of express what I'm doing and just talk about the things going on in my immediate uh, uh, my my immediate plans and my my immediate future and that kind of thing. So and, and you know. A lot, a lot of what I do is just listen to others. I come here usually some, sometimes to just listen and see how everyone's doing. So, what, what does your new new piece sound like? Good grief! Oh, let's see. Um, plenty. It's pretty well synthesizer driven, but then it kind of goes into a combination of Talking Heads, country, and and like like choirs kind of a thing. Uh, I'm talking like, but. It's all seamless, and you know it's it's very metal, I think, and uh, so you know you got to hear it. I can't really really describe it, you know. <laughs> so, if this was an actual X Y crew conversation, would be razzing you to play it, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been my goal in life not to hear anything he's played. Please, please that. That's a typical XY crew comment as well. That's a beautiful thing about men is I saw a web comic once where there were a bunch of girls talking and they're just like kind of all nice to each other and then one leaves and it's like, oh she's such a bitch. Oh I hate that slut. And then there's a second comp panel where it's a bunch of men just insulting each other. One of them leaves and they're like, yeah, he's a really good guy. I like him. And you know, it's really the difference with us men is we can razz each other, but we don't disrespect each other when we do that. We, you know, sometimes we go a little on the edge there, but we just retaliate back. We come back with something equally as good, but there's always respect there. We don't have falsehoods in how we treat each other and i think i think most of the times insults come from a good place where you actually want to hold the other guy accountable or one kind of like the hey have you gained some weight uh because not because you want to insult the person but because you say uh maybe you should do a little bit more sport i i think men are really proud of each other when when they're doing better or when they're improving whereas uh women can be quite envious of of other women doing well there's a scene in the movie gran torino where he he's got this young uh i i think it was vietnamese kid under wing and and um He brings him into his barber shop and he says to the barber shop, how you doing, you little dago wop, blah, blah, you know, and, and they start throwing in, insults at ethnic insults at each other and stuff. And uh, and you can tell that they're doing it. It's a, it's a, like a bonding ritual rather than than an actual insult. And uh, there's a lot of that kind of mentality in X, Y crew that. Um, that uh some of the people will will uh go after other and so the the guy I like with like the most i go after him the the hardest and he goes after me too and we're back and forth on that kind of stuff a lot well i do love um that we can also kind of let our emotions out. And this is something that us men are not really able to do. Um, we can admit our vulnerabilities. You know, women are always saying, well, you know, men need to be able to cry and we need to undo this. And it's like most of the hatred that men get for expressing their emotions come from the same women who wish men were more emotional. And we've learned that if we want to have any respect for women at all, we don't really show our emotional side. Because the moment we do, we stop becoming men to them. But we still have emotions and we can compartmentalize them. But with XY crew, if we need to, we can let that come out. And 
it's not like we're treated with kid gloves. I mean, we're not insulted if we're being a little bit on the emotional side, but it's like, we're not going to be pampered either. Like, oh, you poor thing. What can I do to make you stop crying? It's like, if you need to cry, get it out. Here's the space to do it. I don't think we've had very many people cry, but that opportunity is always there if someone needs to let it out. And have you guys, have you guys ever met in, in person as an XY crew? Uh, one guy wants to go out for beers with me, but we haven't arranged it yet. I mean, I've been busy with ICMI, so. Yeah, Paul Elam is is trying to get together a uh, a thing where we'll all go to we'll all go to um, the Virginia, someplace in Virginia, and and hang out together for a a weekend or a week in October. And there are even people in Australia who are saying, let's incorporate, let's incorporate a trip to the United States. We'll go to California. We'll drive across the country with some California members and, and, you know, get an RV and all show up there together. So there's, there's a big desire to do that. I, um, if, if there's some interest, I, I, I could get you in contact with a guy. Um, I, I, some, I attended a uh, meeting uh, in in the forest with some guys twice it's called wild man and uh, a guy who was a speaker at icmi uh, 2018 he he runs it and there are three teachers one is kind of like talks about energy like masculine energy one is kind of a viking guy and the other one uh, looks into like native american uh, stalking techniques and and um, how to make fires and stuff like that, and and we had like four days um, and and each one of the teachers trains you something different. You uh, learn how to stalk, you learn how to wrestle and stuff like that. Last time I got a bit of a broken rib, uh, which was awesome. Um, but but I mean it's 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 compulsory. Uh, sorry, it's not compulsory. You can say what you want to do or not. And between these lessons, um, we we gather around the fireplace, and you get a talking stick. And whoever holds the talking stuff has the word. And um, you reflect on how the lesson was and what you're experiencing. And honestly, I've never experienced anything like that before because over the course of the four days every single one of us collapsed in the most beautiful way even the teachers like there was this teacher who just like fell apart and was crying and told a story where his wife hit him and he hit her back and how much that hurt him that he hurt his wife and but how much his his marriage improved afterwards and I've never experienced this male connectivity uh, more than that. And the thing is how, what many people say, we were sitting shoulder to shoulder, not face to face. And, and you got this talking staff and you had the right to talk about whatever you wanted to talk about. And I think when you guys gonna meet in person, um, rituals like that really help each voice to be heard. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, I can get you in touch with one of the teachers and he might give you some um, some tips. Well, I'll sure. recommend that uh, Paul Elam watch this when it goes live on YouTube. Um, but if you want, I'll also email you, Philip Panzer, and get some of that information and see if maybe he might want it or not. Maybe he has alternate plans, but I think he'll be at least open to consider it. Um, but as far as the answer to the question you asked earlier, I have only met one person, which was Paul Elam. I went to Virginia a couple of months ago um, to meet with my magazine co-creator who did the article on construction safety. And Paul happened to be there. So I met up with him for lunch. So... I'm, I'm hoping to meet more people from it, though, and I'm really excited about this trip that Paul has wants to do. 
all of us come together in Virginia and just spend a couple of days of drinking and cooking and camping and what have you. Yeah, Philip, love your house, by the way. <laughs> it, just, it looks like a cabin out in the woods and it's got, got all those goods and those, you know, seasonings right there, if, if those are seasonings. Yeah. Nice. Christmas decorations like that. Nice. Did you kill all of those uh, antelope? <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually vegetarian, but I skinned some of them. Some of them are roadkill, and I skinned them. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't eat animals, but he hates them. So, <laughs> but but I'm contemplating on starting to eat meat again because vegans piss me off so much. <laughs> well, you could just eat the vegans. <laughs> No, no, they, they, they have absolutely no nutrition. <laughs> have, have, you ever looked at, have you ever looked at vegans? They're all gray and pale. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I've looked at them. And while I enjoy the occasional vegan meal, I couldn't adopt that lifestyle. It seems like vegans can only last for about five years before they desperately need meat. I agree. I agree. I knew a woman who had a bumper sticker that said, animals are my friends. I don't eat my friends. And I said, well, I'm sure your friends are disappointed. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think that's going to work for us today. Um, I want to thank you, Dan and Philip, for joining us. Uh, Thanks for having me. Thanks for crashing the party. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it's, um, I was going to say, it's the the cost of it is only $5 a month. And as, as Tom Golden pointed out, that's just enough to keep the trolls out. You know, if you want to join and bitch it, if you want to pay us $5 a month to bitch at you, we'll take your $5 and we'll bitch back. <laughs> Well, I think it was a great opportunity because you kind of represent, Philip, everyone out there that we want to bring in. And this pretty much is what XY Crew is like on a daily basis, whether it's in the Cyber Shed or a special group that Paul and Janice have. And we, tr- we desire to cater to every time zone we can and try to have as many meetings as we can. Yeah, it is U.S. heavy, but it's... It's and in fact, if we get more Australians and and uh, Europeans, we can probably maybe get is somebody in this group who's like a leader. Um, what's this guy's Brockway or what's the fellow Brockway. in us? Yeah, I mean, if he wanted to host something, I, I I'm guessing that that would work, and we could have more events that are not in the middle of the night for the Australians. Um, that can be in the middle of the night for us in America, and that's fine too. But certainly we would like more people to join, and it's not really about the money. I mean, most of the money is tied up in just keeping it running. Yeah. Um, but like Tom Golden says, it just keeps the trolls out. If people are going to pay for something, generally it's going to be people who want to get something out of it. So uh, go to... Um, What's the new website, or is it still Regarding Men? Regarding Men is still there. I, I'm pretty sure you can still join through Regarding Men. And it's, okay. it's there's regardingmen.com, I think. And um, XY Crew has a subscribe star, I believe, and that because that's what I'm using. So yeah. So go to subscribe star, search for XY Crew, and that's another way to join. They're starting to use that a little bit more. So that's actually the best way to access it. I know that regarding men.com, which is what it was formerly called, still has a forum there. So, but not too many yeah. people use it. Maybe once we start getting more members in, it'll become revitalized. But uh, definitely go to subscribe star, and that's where you can find out all the information. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, close this. Uh, thank you again, Dan and Philip and everyone, all the attendees watching, and have a good day.
See you guys. Good night. <laughs> night. Good night.